Hello everybody, thanks for coming out today. Um, my name is Esteem. Um, many of you know the struggles and, and difficulties that I've faced, so I'm not going to talk about me today. I'm going to talk about a student that I helped enroll into the college yesterday. And I felt very compelled to speak for him and I speak with him. He was a blind student and I had to read the CCC application to him so that he could be enrolled. It took about 30 minutes to read off every question and, and explain it to him because he couldn't see what was there. And it really struck me when I got to one page on the CCC application which said student services. And he explained to me why he wanted to come to Berkeley City College because the school that he was at before was not providing him with services that he needed, such as a Braille even, to, to help take his classes. And he asked me, oh, do you guys have a Braille? I'm like, yes, yes, we have that, we have that. He's like, oh, you have a good ESP I to him. I'm like, yes, we have that, we have that. And I started to read off the student services and then there's a little asterisk on the bottom that says not all of these services are provided at all campuses. Yeah, and I started yeah. to read off, would you like information about housing? He said, yes, so I click that. Would you like information about counseling? Yes, I click that. And the more and more I read, and the two years that I've been here, I see the less and less of these services provided at our campus in this district. And it makes me wonder, am I promising him stuff that won't be here next semester? I don't know if we're going to have a braille for him next semester. I don't know if he can get information about special jobs that he can enroll in. I don't know if he's going to have the type of counseling which he needs because every semester I've been here, two years now, I see we have less and less. And I felt really guilty for telling him, we're going to have this, we're going to take care of you, because honestly, I don't know if we're going to be able to take care of him in the way that he needs. So, the one thing I could promise is that I would speak on his behalf and I would fight on his behalf. So, if each of you could make that promise, then I think he will have a support system. Even if it's not from the administration or from the state, he will have all of us on his behalf. So thank you very much. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Yeti, and uh, I'm a student here at UCC. It's a very good program. And what I want to talk about, I mean, we know that uh, the crisis is horrible. It's really cutting us everywhere. And the thing that I want to ask everyone is how many of you here get up early in the morning to go to work, to feed yourself, to feed your families, to go to school, to do all these things? How many of you out there do this every single day? So this is the power that we have. We are the ones that are running this country. We are the ones that are running this world. And it cannot be that we just choose a few people to make the decisions for us. So what I want to ask everybody is let's transfer our hope and let's transfer our hope from the voting ballot to ourselves, to our neighbors, to our students, to all the people that surround us because we are the ones that can make a change. So um, just want to ask everybody out there to come down here, say something, talk into your strength because it's in there and just speak out. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Todd, I'm a part-time instructor here. Um, I don't have too much to add, I'll really echo what people have already said, uh, but I read an article in the news before I came down here and I wanted to share it with you because it, it made me really vomit in my office. Uh, so over the summer, the Congress passed $33 billion in extra war funding for Obama's uh, escalation of the war in Afghanistan. And that brought the total amount of money uh, being used for the war in Afghanistan and Iraq to over one trillion dollars. And a couple months later, that same Congress uh, approved ten billion dollars in funding to prevent the layoff of 300,000 school teachers. But the ten billion wasn't enough, and 150,000 school teachers still lost their jobs. And they got that ten billion. They found that meager ten billion dollars for public schools by cutting the uh, federal food stamps. Uh, budget. Uh, so that's where they found the money. And this is in the Democratic-controlled Congress. 
So these are the same people who are coming to us every election cycle, you know, saying, oh, vote for us because we care about teachers, we care about students, we care about workers, and here they are cutting food stamps to help fund uh, the escalation of a war. So, um, and now, because the election's coming up, the Democrats are coming to us and saying, look, this is a really important election, uh, vote for us, you don't want the Republicans to get in there, because, you know, they're, they're worse than us. But we have to really recognize that this is a trick, because the priorities uh, for the Democrats are the same priorities as the Republicans, to protect the banks, and as it has been said already, to make ordinary people pay for this crisis. Workers and students and teachers pay for this crisis. Uh, and it's easier for them to attack us rather than their rich friends who put them in office and whose bank accounts they protect. Um, and the only reason it's easier for them to attack us right now, again, is because we're not organized yet to fight back. So get involved. Thank you. Good afternoon, Berkeley City College. Thanks for all of you who came to this event. My name is Matt Freeman. I'm an instructor of political science here, and I'm a product of public education. I'm a first-generation college graduate. Neither one of my folks even graduated high school. I'm a proud son of two union members who have seen their jobs at their, their union systematically cut. My dad's a mechanic for AC Transit and helped to stabilize the buses that you ride throughout Berkeley and Oakland. And so I've seen my dad and my friends and my family members who are part of unions be, be pointed at as the problems in California. And corporate elites are telling America that laborers and unions and middle class Americans are the problem as to why all the budget cuts are happening. We know time and time again that decisions are made as to why the budget cuts in education are going on. Priorities are being placed higher or more above education. My concern is not only or exclusively tied to the cuts in education and how wrong it is for our decisions, our students to have to make decisions between paying for a textbook or buying a bag of groceries, between paying for their college tuition or paying their rent. These are the decisions you all know all too well. These are the decisions that my generation and the generations before us, because community college education used to be free in California, that we didn't have to make. But these are the decisions you are having to make because of priorities being placed above education, above public education in California. So we have a budget shortfall in public education, K through PhD, a budget cut at the elementary schools, the high schools, the community colleges, the CSUs, and the UC, all across the board. Tuitions are being raised to help subsidize these vaccines that are created in cuts in education. Public education is in the process, right before our very eyes, of shifting into the private sector. The reality is, is that we don't have enough money as a college to function, so we are being asked to find private corporate sponsorships to help subsidize many of our shortfalls. No longer are our public schools beholden to the citizens who pay taxes to subsidize your education. Many of our programs are being subsidized by private and corporate sponsorships at the community colleges. There are high schools and elementary schools in Cupertino and in places around California that are having to seek corporations to sponsor to subsidize teachers, salaries, and half the school program. No longer are these schools beholden to the, exclusively the people but they are beholden to corporate interests who do not have an interest in knowledge and education, but have an interest exclusively in expanding their bottom line and profit margins at the cost of our public institutions. This is the reality of California's public education. And California, it has been said, is the prism through which the rest of the nation sees its future. There is no doubt that what happens with public education in California will be and we're seeing reflected throughout the rest of the nation. We can do things. History has shown that if people come together rather than stand alone, that there is no barrier too strong, no roadblock too big that we can't come together to overcome. But it requires each of us as individuals to step up and engage this process and fundamentally change the direction of our politics and reevaluate our priorities in California and the rest of the nation. I'd like to leave you with a proverb that when I first heard it changed my life and I hope that 
you hear the words of an ancient proverb that comes from Rabbi Hillel, and he said this, If I am not for myself, who will be? If I am for myself alone, what am I? And if not now, when? Ask yourself that question as you begin to go up to your classes. If not now, when? When will you stand up for yourself, for your community, and for the family and the community and people that you love? Thank you so much. Next we have Justin who's out there, or Jason will actually just take the spot. You can come up with Justin if you want to. <laughs> Justin, don't get stage fright. We need you. Right, so, my name is Jason. How, how is everyone doing right now? Really good? Yeah. Are you, are you pissed off? No, no, no. Please, tell me, are you pissed off? Yeah. Yes. Okay, one thing. Okay, so, one thing that's come up several times during this, this whole speak out, everyone's saying their own thing, which I really appreciate, is the, necessar the necessity of fighting back. Yes, it is ne necessary to fight back, but let's stop and think about what are we saying? Why is it that every time something that, that is rightly, rightly ours, we have to fight back? Whenever they, they try to take away our education, they say, oh, well, it's necessary to fight back. Whenever we don't have enough money for health care and we need to deal with these questions, oh, fight back. When it, whenever we don't have money for public transportation, we have to fight back. What, what does it say about the priorities of our society that the most basic thing we have to, you know, constantly have to fight about when it's ours in the first place? So I just want to entertain an idea. Imagine if ordinary people, people like ourselves, were the ones who actually ran society. Because think about it. In, in a way, we already are. So when, when we go on the bus, who, who's driving the bus? One of us. When, who's fixing the bus? One of us. Whenever we go to a hospital, who's the one who actually deals with us? One of us. So you can go down the list. Every single sector of the society, it's not a CEO, it's not a shareholder, it's not any of those folks. It's one of us. So imagine, if we're the ones who are actually making this run, what, what, what kind of society can we really create if we were the ones who ran it ourselves? So yes, it is necessary to fight back, but not fighting for the sake of fighting, let's fight to win. Hello, brothers and sisters. No, I just wanted to, I don't have anything planned to say, but I just wanted to make it clear that I don't think these elections coming in November are going to make a goddamn difference, to be honest with you. I think it's a conscious movement that's going to change something. It's the people who give the state its legitimacy, and it's the conscious people that can take that state apart and make a new one. Thanks. So there's a, we're going to have an open mic. It's been an open mic for a while, but uh, if you want to come form a line and start speaking, or we can have uh, people come speak again. I'm one of the teachers out of the campus. I made a uh, door knock before, so I'm not to uh, teach people knock on their doors to get their signatures and then we were allowed to go around. Yeah. Uh, you know, I talk about the last thing? I'll be aware, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just talk, like, uh, like uh, uh, Matt Piggott. Corporate buddies, that's Silicon Valley. She cares about the oil companies. So vote for Jerry Brown, all right? He may not be the best guy, but the neck women sure the hell does not care about you, alright? So go out and vote, alright? Do not sit in your ass. Don't let the Tea Party take his election. Don't let the Republicans take it. Because we were like, whatever, I don't want to vote. It's not that hard, and we can, you know, be, be the defense against the, like, terror of Republicans. Okay? Right, thank you.